I'm Josh McDonald. And I'm Miranda Matiri, and we're a part of Hand Therapy Academy. Today, we're going to show you how to make two different versions of the same splint. We're going to make a CMC arthritis orthosis. So many of the times that we make splints, you see people making paper patterns on paper towel or, or drawing things out with all these landmarks and then cutting things out. We're going to show you a whole different method. We're going to use what's called a stretch and tag method. So we're going to use a very simple cutout square or rectangle to make these same splints, but with a lot less effort, a lot less of drawing all these extra steps. You're used to cutting out on a pattern where we have all these weird tags and hang offs. The same shape is going to take basically the same form here, but it's a lot quicker. It saves this whole pattern making thing. It saves my hands cutting through this material trying to get the just right shape. Um, and it's not going to leave all these weird hang offs and things and weird shapes that now I'm fitting the next splint on. So, so this method is going to give you a more efficient way to do it. And it's going to give you more time to spend time with patients explaining things, wear and care, all that home education stuff. And the purpose of the splint, or the CMC arthritis splint, is to provide stability. As we know, the cartilage breaks down between the trapezium and the metacarpal. And as it breaks down, you lose a lot of the stability. So the splint will provide stability, prevent further inflammation and joint deterioration, as well as help with the stretching of the adductor, because we know with arthritis, it will start to collapse as it's looking for stability. And with the goal to be improving the overall function for the patient. So let's take a look at how to use a simple shape and our stretch and tag method to make two versions of the same split. Okay, so let's talk about our first version. I'm going to take a really simple little rectangle of material. I'm using 1 16th Aquaplast. This is the Ultra Perf at 13%. Um, we don't have any brand affiliations. That's just the material I like using. Um, it tags to itself really well and separates without getting like permanently stuck. Um, so I'm going to use a little simple piece of this. Um, I've got a couple other pieces of uh, material here. We're, we use Velcro brand uh, Velcro with a sticky back on it. Again, no brand affiliations, just what we like to use. Um, we'll heat this up. Make sure you kind of, uh, find out from your rep whether or not you should heat the back of your Velcro. Some of them shouldn't be heated. Um, and then just simple one inch Velcro. We also like to use for the perforated material, you get kind of like a, a little jagged edge there sometimes. So we've bought this um, long roll of um, adhesive backed Velcro, or excuse me, adhesive backed felt. Um, and it's got some paper backing on it. We cut it into three quarter inch width strips um, and then we'll wrap that edge with this. And then when that wraps around, when we're all said and done, you'll see that in our finished stage, that gives a little bit nice, more professional edge and a little softer edge to it. So let's get this ready. Basically, it only has to be roughly the length from the IP joint just past the CMC. Doesn't have to be specifically measured, just roughly that shape. And the more you do it, the more comfortable you'll get. And a little bit extra width there to make it a rectangle. I'm gonna make two cuts to get this ready for the patient. I'm gonna cut a diagonal like that, there. And it was roughly like a third of the width of that piece. And then I'm gonna cut a little notch out of the other side. There, and I turn. So I cut that out. Again, roughly about a third, doesn't have to be exact because this is gonna stretch and tag. I'll put that in the heat. I'm also gonna put these two in the heat because I'll use these as tags. I put this, over that Velcro edge, so that every time the patient pulls the Velcro off, they're not pulling that Velcro edge off. Um, I'll use a little solvent to make sure it glues on there, but that works really well to make sure that they don't have to come back to get new Velcro stickies back on there. So let's see what it looks like once that comes out of the heat and how to put it on a patient. For our first version, the one where we cut thirds off of either end, I'm gonna orient this on her hand so that that notch goes along the back. I'm gonna take it so that that edge is right at the IP of her, uh, of her thumb. And then this little cutoff will wrap around the palm side. Before I get to that, we're going to take our one inch stockinette and I'm going to cut a little bit of a slit here. Okay? That helps me get it on her web space. And I'm going to slide that on nice and gentle. Okay? And I'm going to try to lay those down as nice and smooth as I can right there. I'll take my two inch stockinette and we use this just so it's a little bit more comfortable on our patients if they're a little bit heat sensitive or. Um, uh, or if they're a little uncomfortable with the pressure or anything like that, we'll do that. So whole hand goes in, thumb goes in the extra hole, just like that. And I'll use this to try to keep those nice and those tags down, or those tails down pretty well, okay? I'm going to ask her to make a gentle tip-to-tip -tip touch, make sure she understands what I'm going to be asking of her later, so she's going to be able to do that. Now I also have a little bit of a spacer here, so it's less likely to get stuck on her IP joint coming off. We all know it's, you get that point when you're trying to take it off and it gets stuck and you have a little bit more of panic. We can always untag and reseat this if we need to, but that helps make sure that's not likely to happen. So now I'm going to pull the material out of the water. 
and I dry it off just a little bit. And again, that notch goes on the back. I'm going to pull through and hold that one down. And then I'm going to pull through on that angle that I cut. And I'm going to take a second and try to get a nice solid bond between those two. I'm going to pull them down around the back, just at the ends like Miranda talked about earlier. We're going to do that gentle tip to tip touch. And then while she's holding there, I'm just going to make sure we have nice smooth lines, no sharp edges, everything's where it's supposed to be. We'll roll this in the hot water later once it's well set. We're going to make some marks on here in just a sec, make sure everything's nice and neat, make sure everything's smooth. If you wait another maybe 30, 40 seconds, you can use a yellow pencil. If not, if you have fingernails, I don't have fingernails, so I'm going to use this to make my line and I'm going to come really far around the back side. I'm going to avoid that snuff box. So I'm going to come this direction around here. I like having lots of uh, coverage on the dorsum of the hand. And then when we go to the palm side, I'm going to come and maybe I can use the yellow pencil. Now maybe it'll work. There we go. That works. Okay. I'm going to come right through that thenar crease up to that web space. I'll come around here and go ahead and finish that all the way onto the back of the hand. Okay. Like that. Now to take it off, I'll break the seal of that. If you can take it out, great. That gives you just a little bit more space. I'm going to untag this. If you get stuck, that can come off relatively easily and then I just glue that back down with a solvent. Otherwise, I slide it off, okay? And I like to cut it when it's maybe not completely, completely hardened. If I wait too long, eh, well, it just gets a little bit harder and I'm putting more stress on my hands. But by doing this, it cuts a little bit easier. If you've forgotten to cut tags ahead of time, you can use this little cutoff for your tags. And you're going to say, well, that maybe that looks like a little bit more cutoff and maybe wasted material. But if you want, that can be saved for a finger splint. You can heat that back up again. Use that on a finger splint if you need to. Otherwise, that's not a whole heck of a lot more lost material, if at all, than something that comes off a pattern with all the leftover there. So slide back on. Support CMC joint, MCP joint, IP free, and we will roll that in the heat in just a little bit. Let's see what finishing the splint looks like. Okay, so now that we've made it on Miranda, we need to finish it. The first thing I'm going to do is roll that top edge. It's a little bit sharp, so I'm just going to dip the very tip of that thumb end in the water. I'm going to hold it there for about oh, five or eight seconds or so, not very long, and I can watch it start to contract a little bit as that material shrinks. And then I'm going to come back and just roll it out. And that gives the patient a little bit more comfort around that edge. Got to make sure it doesn't get smaller on me as it wants to shrink, but I do a nice roll there. And that takes it down just a little if you've got it too high, but then that roll also gives a nicer edge around there. And I'll just, call, while it's still wet, kind of smooth that around a little bit, okay? Then I'm going to bring our heat gun in and we'll take the stickies off and I'll heat it up under the heat gun and we'll stick one on here. And then I'll take another one and we'll heat that one up. And then I'll put another one so that it comes down around the wrist. I don't want it coming around the hypothenar eminence. I want it below at that wrist crease level. So I'm going to angle that down just a little bit there. Okay. Then we're going to take our edging. Okay. We have this from before. I'm going to peel the backing off. And again, we talked about doing this because especially when you're using that perforated material and in Arizona, all we use is perforated material unless we need some rigidity uh, just because it's so darn hot, hot here. Um, that keeps me from ending up with a jagged edge there. So I'm going to put that all the way around. I like to put it like on the, like halfway around there, and then it matches those contours a little better. Okay. Then when I push it down on either end, it makes a nice contour. And then my strapping, got to make it look good. So we're going to round our ends. I'll come here. And we'll slide it on. Okay. We come down around the base of the wrist, right there, and we're nice and stable. I'll trim this end to make sure it matches, but one thing left over is when they pull this off, over time that's going to start to lift that edge off. So what I'll do here is take a little bit of our solvent. I like to use the lid to rest the brush on so it doesn't get my towel all gross. I'm going to take one piece out here, dry that off. 
put just a little bit of solvent on that piece. Okay, not a ton. And I'm going to lay that over top of the edge there. And just by doing that, I'm going to get a little press, make sure it sticks. That's going to make sure that when they lift on that edge, it's not pulling the Velcro up. Okay, I'll do that on both edge, both edges. But now she's got that gentle tip to tip touch. CMC is well supported. IP is free and we're good to go. But we've got another version to show you. So let's see what Miranda's version looks like. So for my version, you're going to take a simple square and you're going to cut off the corner. So this corner right here, cut off and that'll go right where, right below the IP joint. And then for this piece, I'm going to cut it into strips to tag the Velcro. And for my version, one thing that I want to mention, and for any splint where you're doing the stretch and tag method, you want to make sure you're stretching only from the ends. Because if you stretch from anywhere else, like the middle, then the material is going to lengthen and you're going to lose some of the integrity. Okay, I am going to be um, placing the stockinette. I'm going to do this a little bit different than Josh did on his version. And one thing I'm going to point out is there's usually a differential between the IP joint and the proximal part of the thumb. Therefore, um, the larger that differential is, the more likely the splint is going to get stuck. So in that case, I'm going to show you a little technique to um, accommodate that differential. And so as you can see, I have that edge cut out and that's going to go around the IP joint. So I'm going to tag that right there. And once again, I want to remind you not to um, pull from the center, but pull from the very edge that you have left over. And then I'm going to ask him to go into that functional position. And I'm actually going to have him hold up a, a pen so we make sure that's really functional. And then for mine, I'm going to just slide a couple of paper clips in and this will ensure that you can slide it off. And the more paper clips you add, obviously the, the more room you're gonna have to work with. But I typically do two, but if there was a significant differential, I might do a couple more. So as that cools, then I'm gonna go ahead and mark. And typically to save time, I use my nail and go around and that, because if you do the marking pin too soon, you definitely can't see it. And then I'm going to go ahead and untag from the back. Go ahead and release the pin as it cools. I'm going to break the seal and pull the paper clips out. I'm going to go ahead and slide it off. And it's okay if the stockinette comes off. And then where I put my nail mark, I'm going to trim it. And I like trimming it, like Josh said, when it's still um, cooling because it makes it a lot easier to cut and then you're going to save your own, your own joints. And I'm just doing proximal to the wrist crease. And then you can use those pieces to tag it down. You can smooth that out. I'm just gonna do a quick test. And there we go. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and slide this on as a test fitting. Um, one thing I want to make sure that I mention is that you make sure this is really far below the A1 pulley. This is a common sight when people are using it and they're really flexing into it. If it's too high, it irritates it and they end up with a little flexor tenosynovitis. So that's one thing that I always watch for um, when I'm making the splint. So I'm going to go ahead and edge the splint um, similar to how Josh did. Um, one thing I want to make sure is to talk about as well is making sure that you cut the splint just distal um, to the proximal wrist crease. This will ensure that as they're bending and flexing their wrist that it doesn't push the splint distally and where it's sliding around and causing um, some irritations. And then just go ahead and press it down nicely. Um, and then the other thing that I'm going to do is add the strips on there, similar to how Josh did. I'm going to, however, just do it um, not on the patient. And then you're going to go ahead and smooth this down really well. And the more you smooth it out, the less notice it'll, noticeable it'll be. 
And this will ensure that they don't come back to the clinic mad because their Velcro isn't sticking on, especially when you use the perforated material that um, Velcro is more likely to pull up. Um, and one other thing that I like to do is seal this edge right here. Um, ideally, um, you would do it before you put the edging on. <laughs> so, but just to demonstrate that, um, I would just heat that up and push it over so it makes a nice seal. And then we'll go ahead and slide this on. And then always round out your edges. That keeps the Velcro from pulling up um, when people are doing things. And then go ahead and hook it around. And like Josh said, you can anchor it down a little bit um, around the, the wrist crease. This provides a little bit more comfort for them. All right, and there you have it. Thanks for watching. We hope you guys learned a little bit more about how to make splints, some of our most common splints, with a little bit different technique. We're not spending as much time laying things out on paper towel and tracing hands and cutting that onto material. We're just jumping right into making that splint, being a little bit more efficient with our time and maybe spending a little bit more time with patient care, spending more time interacting with the patient and not as much on all the front end stuff. You can check us out at handtherapyacademy.com where we have some home exercise programs posted. We have some informational blogs specifically about CMC arthritis and the appropriate orthosis. And follow us on Instagram at handtherapyacademy. So we look to see you guys next time. Um, follow us up um, and look out for more information that we have coming up both on other splints and lots of other hand therapy education stuff.